this Yamaha outboard tilt and trim is starting to make some really kind of gurgly noises and not like to go up and down very well. Um, what happens is air can get into the system and then the hydraulic system doesn't function very good using air as the hydraulic fluid, so you need to refill it with hydraulic fluid. But the problem is, especially in this one's case, how did the air get in? Well, we've got a leaking seal, so I'm going to show you what we need to do to fix this leaking seal. It was either red, green, or maybe it's the Yamaha technical service manual that says for the first step you need either a dumb friend or a son. And, well, I don't have either of those, so you're going to unscrew this screw here in the side, which will relieve the pressure and allow you to manually lift the engine. Now, as you throw your back out and dislocate your shoulder lifting that, flip down the little safety lock up at the top so that it will stay up with this unscrewed. At that point, you'll have access in here and you can safely remove this cylinder seal. This one here is the specific one that's leaking. And it's coming right out the seal at the end. So we're gonna remove this cap, replace those seals and reassemble it, then refill it with hydraulic oil so the tilt and trim works on this. So let me pull you in a little closer so that you can see what we need to do in order to do this. Okay, so I've already rebuilt this one because I wanted to have an idea of what I was doing so I could show you uh, the right way to do it. So what we need in order to get this off is a special little tool called a pin spanner wrench. And so this little guy, there's a link to these in the description. You can pick these up for any number of different sized things. I'll have this specific one as well as a kit that'll let you do basically any tilt and trim system. But this is a pretty simple little system that you take a half inch ratchet, install it onto there, then you get this, put those pins down in, lock them in place, and then just apply a tremendous amount of torque. Uh, I guess get the pins locked in a little bit better before you apply the tremendous amount of torque, and then crack it loose. Then you can spin this cap out a little bit at a time. You're going to want to put an oil pan below this because as you loosen this, it is going to spill oil out and you want to catch that. Um, basically just unscrew it, pull the cap off, inspect the seals. Likely the seals in the cap are shot. Go ahead and pull the piston out and inspect those seals too, just in case, and it'll make it easier to put the cap back in later on. Got our new seals back here in a little bag. We'll get them out in just a minute. First, let's peel these old seals out of here. So, I generally like to use a pair of small screwdrivers. You could use a pick or an awl or something along those lines, but these generally work pretty good because I can get them in, pry it out a little bit, then get the next one in, just kind of work the seal out without marring this aluminum because this is an aluminum cap, so it's going to be soft. The next one is down in here. In some cases it may be easier. Flip this over. Try not to grip on the threads. Grip on this part with your vise. We don't really want to mar those threads up. So I'm going to flip this over just because of the way the seal goes in. It's a little bit easier to peel it out from this direction. So we get in there and just kind of hook into the seal. Get our next one in kind of work it a little at a time until we can get it out of the groove. It is a challenge sometimes. These seals get stiff with age and they really don't want to cooperate. And so sometimes it does take a little bit of a battle to get them out, but eventually you can peel them up out. Again, be careful, take your time. Don't mar the aluminum, don't scratch it. Now you note this seal is shaped kind of like a U. It's flat on this side, has a taper in here and a taper in here, and it's open on this side. So we need to put it back in in the same orientation. 
with that open end facing down into the cylinder. We've got two seals here. This one is the dust seal on the top. This is the actual high pressure shaft seal. So you see how it's open on that one side, just like I mentioned, and then it's flat on this side. So the flat side goes towards the outside of the cylinder. Now putting these in is a challenge because you can't rip this, you can't nick it or tear it in any way. Otherwise it'll just leak again, but getting them to flex enough to go in, these are pretty stiff rubber seals because they have to seal pressure. So warming them up is a good option if you have some warm water or something. Not hot enough where it's going to melt or cause other issues, but warming them up, getting them in, sometimes having to put your finger in from the top side to kind of guide the thing into the spot where it's supposed to sit and just kind of twist and push the thing down in into its proper place. You can use your screwdriver just gently to guide it. Again, don't be ripping anything or forcing anything, but just gently coerce it into the spot where it is meant to sit in this cap. If at all possible, I like to push on the I like to push on the outside edge because the inside edge is what seals to the cylinder, so that's going to have a tendency to wear more. And sure, all of it is important to the sealing, but once it's in there most of the way like this, you can usually kind of take your finger and um, twist it the rest of the way into place, or if it's a little stiff, you may just need to use a screwdriver and then that one is popped in where it's supposed to go. So, see the seal in there? Looks nice and happy. Flip this over. And we'll put in our dust seal. And of this, see how there's a tapered side? And this flat side? And this tapered side, tapered side goes out to keep dust from getting into the cylinder. And so this will just work down in, and get it into the spot. Once it's in that groove, this is ready to go back on the boat. Now there are other seals come in the kit, so depending on your problem, this is all this one needed. This O-ring is still okay, that comes in the kit. If you want to replace it, you can. But these two seals are what's going to see the wear and tear, where that shaft is running in and out on these seals. A little dirt, a little dust, a little grime, some zebra muscle, whatever, could get in there and damage those seals, and that's generally where I see leaks happen. So let's go pop this back on the boat. We'll show you what you need to do to fill it with hydraulic fluid, get it all bled, and get your tilt and trim going up and down. So what we're going to need to do is install that cap back onto the piston that we removed earlier. This could be a challenge because those new seals are going to be a bit stiff, so it may take a little force. Uh, put some oil on the seals and maybe try putting it in, in the wrong direction first to kind of set everything into place. But once it's on there, you can take the cap with the piston attached and reinstall it back into the uh, tilt and trim unit. Make sure to fully engage your pins and then give her a good little heft. Not crazy tight, just tight enough to make sure everything's good and sealed. So now I'm going to show you the tools that I use to fill this with oil. So this is, bas this is basically my setup. I've got a little squeeze bottle with a piece of fuel line to some quarter inch um, plastic line. And what we do, I'm sure Yamaha has a specification for their tilt and trim fluid. Everything that I've seen, everything I've ever read, it's basically AW32 hydraulic oil. Um, it's your decision what you want to put in. I use AW32 oil and I have never had a problem. So that cap right there is just barely big enough that you can fit this in. Then you basically just squeeze a little oil and you'll watch it kind of 
run its way down and normally I'll elevate this so you're not going to be able to see that elevated but you'll be able to see the oil pushing its way through fill this little reservoir up and then with this screw still loose over here run the pump a little bit to get the pump full of oil then we'll have to run the tilt and trim up and down some to bleed the cylinders, refill. So there's a bit of a process there, but it just takes a little bit of time and really no special tools. Honestly, it seems pretty happy. Run it through one more swipe and then uh, check and make sure we got enough oil in there. happy as can be. Now let's see, we're probably going to get a lot of air and maybe some barfy oil out of there too. Now we're getting a solid stream there. It's not looking as aerated. So I'm going to put our cap back on. We'll call that good. So that's pretty much all you need to know. If you've got leaky cylinder seals on your tilt and trim, it's basically the same process. Now the upper center one would be a little bit more challenging because you'd have to remove the pin and some other stuff. But again, this is something that if you take your time and work through it, you can figure this out. It's really not that complicated. It just takes a little bit of finesse. So there you have it. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Get your tilt and trim working ready for the lake this season. Thanks for watching.